Miracles for New York, even though they do find themselves in that third place position right now in the overall stage four qualifier standings. Yeah, you're feeling good though if you are New York because when they needed to show improvements was in the hard points, in the fundamentals. They were always great when you talk about the rotation, but so far throughout this stage, between every single map, their whole percentage went from eighth to second overall. The only thing though that's gonna cause them problems is that on this specifically, they are still 10th. So they are struggling in whole percentage. You need to fix that here. Absolutely the case. But again, the moments we've seen from New York definitely give us the insinuation that these guys could be a major threat come the major. So here we go. Right on in towards this, the P1. Nice route opening things up for Hydra. Actually keeps Thieves completely away from the opening time. Follow up though for Kremp and Ghosty is good. And the Thieves find a way to re-break almost immediately. Yeah, that's a good break. To work your way back in with still 30 seconds to fight for here at P1. You have a route being hit from Kismet to potentially find an opening for his teammates. He wins the one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Cannot find the second but your teammates now should have the man advantage to break their way back on in. And that's exactly the case. Again, when these SMGs start to circle and swarm like this, this New York team looks absolutely deadly. And now the quick rotation back down over towards P2. Unfortunate little team stun takes Hydra out of the picture. So it does stretch out this New York setup just a touch. Kismet down low, though. Good pickup. And that will be enough to open up the early time here for New York. Yeah, it's going to be Kismet, but it's Kismet by himself. So he's going to be stuck between every single player from the LA. He's able to execute onto him. And now, hold on to this P2 hard point. New York, though, they're doing a great job of just keeping it scrappy. They didn't have the numbers advantage, but Sib, who's been playing out of his mind all throughout this stage, he finds a double for New York to work their way back in. Yeah, really slow start for Nasty and Kremp here. Just a 3 and 10 combined for them. So it really has just been on Joe and Ghosty to get things going here for the Thieves. And like you mentioned, kind of the chaos that the subliners were able to provide over the top of P2. They are finding a way to dominate in the kill feed. And this is really, really big time for New York. Not just over P2, but they're already making moves over towards the left side of the map for 3 as well. Yeah, LAT, they're going to swallow all the way across the map. You do not want this situation to be upon you. So you need to find this break for the final 10. You're not able to get the kills to do so. And still Hydra contesting around the middle of the map. A 12 and 4 start. But Subline is coming out swinging. Is they're going to be late off this rotation to new, but they had the spawns to break early. I mean, it's maps like this where you look at Hydra and you say, I mean, come on. How do you guard this guy? He is everywhere doing everything. Even chasing down kills at low HP. But Joe Deceives gets a little bit of team help, but that is enough for his double. And with that, the Thieves can threaten from the front. New York still spawning close, still looking to set up the break. Man, they're just waiting, too. I love the patience right now out of Subliners to execute as a complete unit. They find every single kill in the feed. Sky finds a double. And now you're going to allow players like Kismet and Hydra to get a little bit more farther pushed up on the map. Just creating those layers, making it more difficult for LA Thieves to even think about a break. I mean, this has been blinding speed for New York. I know at times, especially when you look to the middle of the season, the criticisms around New York have always been around, can they actually put together an SMG line that not only plays quickly, but plays together? And then the same front, how much criticism was there about Sid? Possibly playing a little bit too slow in the mix of what the SMGs are doing, but when they play like this, they look like one of the best teams, if not the best respawn team of the game. Yeah, this is the perfect way to make sure you're in that form going into the, the end of the year where everyone is firing on all cylinders. We know that the subliners obviously being world champions of last year, that they have the chemistry. It just took a little bit of the time for Sim to get more comfortable, but I feel like now with Major 4, with Chance coming around the corner, he's been playing lights out already at 11 and 5. Yeah, I mean, this has been absolutely incredible for me. Hello. And it's not slowing down. The quick cleanup on the Thieves trying to set up around the back. You've even got Hydra reading spawns along the backside of the old time at three. It Damn! It's absolutely destroying LA Thieves. A hundred point game. Scrap time going to be contested, but only for a small moment. And New York is absolutely doing what Carolina want them to do. Need to see something here from the Thieves. That, so you need a hold and you need it now. Well, the setup looks good to start. Nasty's double gives a little bit of separation. Just a moment to breathe here for LA. Trophy system's also getting placed up top towards P1. Nasty, Cramp working on that location together. Really good start here for the Thieves. New York largely trying to hit this kind of through mid and around the back, but LA have gotten a really solid read on this. Can't quite capitalize on the kills in front of them, but so far so good in terms of the opening 30 seconds. Now it's just holding off the final approach. New York with numbers will find a bit of a break, and LA want to try to keep pressuring. And that's another break where the subliners just were super patient on that team push. They hold down the middle of the map. They wait for two kills to go in their favor before they strike. So they're able to break in with about 25 seconds left. They're going to walk away with the final time. And so they're going to be in the lead by 100 points. 
But now on the second half of this game, LAT, they need to flip the switch and flip it quick. They need this P1 and P2 chain. And it's a good start, Jay. This is exactly what you need. Even the cleanup kills, kind of staggering out New York, just not allowing them to get the full concentrated approaches. This is how you can start to really dig into this deficit. You can even see also Nasty kind of holding down this mid staircase. So New York are going to be really bottled up trying to hit. But so far, the kills are just as good as you would have expected if they were able to find multiple points of ingress. Cramp not able to find an angle. He's outside the play now, and all of a sudden, New York have found a way to get in. Yeah, they found a way to get in, and they are also finding kills in the feed to still hold on to it. Now, Krep, who's been alive for quite some time around this P1 hill, finds herself on three in a wall, wins the gunfight on the pinch versus Siv. And now you just have to find this kill on the Kismet, but he's not even peeking. Ghosty just doing what he can, but like you said, Kismet's just staying down, soaking up hard point time. Ghosty eventually has to try to make the play. Staying alive, slips past Sib, and that's enough for Jodas to come out and save the day. Okay, still a 100-point game. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but a good moment here for Thieves going from 5-1 to one, and maybe a chance with kills to possibly open up the P2 as well. Oh, this is perfect because they were able to flip those spawns oh, right man. before that new hill oh, pops, man. but Sib, the guy who just has an unbelievable series every time he plays against the Thieves, he averages a 1.5 KD. He finds the triple for New York to work their way back in. I mean, that is just a momentum killer for the Thieves. 100%. All of a sudden, puts himself on four. You've got a zone in front of the hard point, and New York, once again, not just winning on the hill, they're trying to win on rotation as well. And now with 30 seconds left, this is all the time that you want to fight for if you are the subliners with the lead that you have. Sim, unfortunately, is going to fall again on five in a row, so no cruise missile going to be earned. But when you have such a lead the way that you do, you're going to hit that early rotation with a lot of time still remaining on that old hill. I don't know if LAT are going to be prepared for the plays coming in from the subliners. Yeah, things looking really positive here for New York. Hydra continuing to still shred and late into the game. We'll see how the subliners are coming with the late New York subliners. Listen in. Dark pillar, absolutely new. Hydra. Let's burger. Nice. I'm looking P1. Flip, flip, flip. flip. Let's burger. I forgot that. I forgot that. I forgot that. I don't have anything. You can be passing. 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 You can be I have one, 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 I have I have a Just wait, just wait. Deep, 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 deep Joe, one shot. Deep Joe, one shot. Absolute, Absolute Joe in the back. Yeah. Uh, uh, no one on tower steps. Tower steps. He's on time. Tower, one shot. No one has no team. Joe in the back. All P2 spawns. All P2. In the back, one shot dead. I have time. I have time. I have time. I have time. One shot. Close right. I have time. Help me. One shot. Close right. I'll be back. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. I have top. I have my child here. Every child. I'll the pinch. Nothing. 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 All front. 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 Well, Thieves are fighting, man, but I don't know if there's anyone tall enough to fight up against Hydra when he Damn! is running like this. Three in a row, right over the top of the final moments. Nasty's name does keep things a little bit more interesting, but it's a mild consequence at this point. New York all over the Vista here, Jay. Yeah, this is unbelievable plays right here from the subliners. Not a map that has treated them fairly well as of recent, but... Just to come out and dominate the way that they have. Now only needing two points. You're going to hit that early rotation over towards P5. Your team is fully set up. You're finding kills around the middle of the map. Yeah, that's map one. Yeah, that's absolutely an unbelievable way to start if you're a New York fan. I mean, it, it's just, it feels like every time we have, maybe not even just this map, but any quick quarters map, Hydra's doing that. I mean, we're through yeah. two hills and he's already got 15 kills. I mean, he is just everywhere but to see Sib, like you mentioned he has had a great stage to this point for him to be that active and play more like a flex than just a second ar alongside skies it feels like that dichotomy between hydra playing aggressive skies in the back line kismet and Sib are almost right next to each other it feels like almost all the time and that flexibility has made this new york respawn look really deadly at times
Yeah, nah, whenever they play like that, they're really hard to beat. Obviously, Sib leads the way in the AR department when you're talking about just finding his kills around the map, clutching up in his one-on-one -on -one gun fights. But then when you're also seeing the way that Hydra is able to move around the map, he's just flowing with confidence. 5,400 damage, 32 and 23, 29 traded kills. Those are the slayers for the subliners. And when they slay, the game looks pretty damn easy. Unreal stuff, man. It just... It, 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 I, I hate to say that it ceases to impress because legitimately every single time you watch Hydra from his POV and he's having maps like this, it's just, is there anyone better? You hate no, to, no. You have to ask the question. You have to ask the question. Yeah. Wow. But okay. I, I, I think the thing here for Thieves fans, though, now all of a sudden after, I mean, let's be honest, the Vista has not been a bad map for them over the course yeah. of this qualifier. I mean, they've had a couple of really good wins, but rotationally, they didn't have it here. So yep. do you worry about them trying to jump into a search and destroy where we get back to back invasions, not just for the search, but also the control? No, I like them in search and destroy. That's the bread and butter game mode for this LAT roster for them to walk away with the majority of these series is through the S and Ds. And thankfully for them that they have an invasion search and destroy. They only have a couple reps on it on this stage, but they stand a pretty good chance at squaring up against a Titan in the subliners who love some invasion search and destroy. It's gonna be a battle of the first blood defenses. Both teams are stellar at it. The attacks are what both teams need to work on. So LAT are gonna give themselves an opportunity here, but with the subliners playing the way that they did, I expect them to play with that same exact pace in S and D. Oh, absolutely. I, I think there's one of those moments where you kind of throw out the playbook a little bit and see, can we just chow and get the hot hand going? Maybe a little bit of a heat check early to see how much these subs could get away with. Because, I mean, again, when it starts like this, where you're up 143 to 24 through essentially the first rotation of hills, you got to be feeling like you're untouchable at certain rates, especially jumping into an invasion search where, let's be honest, everything is pretty much right in front of you, at least for the most part. And the crazy thing about that map number one game flow is that, believe it or not, LAT, they won a couple of the rotations at P2, at the P3s. True, yeah. It's just the hold percentage that is still a big issue for this team in hardpoint. They get all the kills. Just that first wave that comes in, that's where they tend to struggle with it. And then they're forcing themselves to break into hard points, which are very good, difficult to do so, especially with the way that subliners were able to execute on their setups once they broke in. Basically untouchable. So now, going into the search and destroy, this needs to be a response from LAT. We know what Ghosty is going to bring, but I feel like the playmaker in my eyes has to be Kremp because he can set the tone early on to match the pacing of Hydra and also find a lot of those gunfights early on for those first bloods. Yeah, it's it's I, I think that's the biggest part about it because the opening to a win percentage for LA has been great this stage. That's how they've yeah. gotten a lot of their success across the search and destroy through this qualification period. But let's be candid. A lot of those come off of the back end of their Rio search and destroy. Yeah. They've been great in terms of controlling the map, finding opening eliminations and then holding four V3s. The invasion is not bad for them. They still hold the number one overall opening to a win percentage on this map. It just comes in a very different way, which I think is what you're trying to touch on. Yeah, and like that's what they need to focus on here because battles versus Hydra and Kismet, you know how aggressive they like to be on the map. And based off of that map, number one, they're probably going to be running in sync together, shutting down uh, solo plays, especially when you try to go over towards A on your offensive rounds. They're already going to be in cafe ready to contest you with the momentum they were able to gain off of that map, number one. So if you are LAT, I think the way that you need to start off the search and destroy is slow and steady wins the race. See what the subliners are going to throw at you and encounter it. Other side of things to keep in mind here outside of the opening setups as we get later into these rounds Both of these two teams are really good on this map in particular But overall this stage about playing around the bomb whether that is trying to find a way to get a successful retake Or more importantly finding a way to convert on their post plant setups this map in particular Both teams have been nearly flawless at being able to hold their plants So there's a lot to be looking at in terms of not just what happens in the first 30 seconds But maybe more so Jay what happens in the last 30 seconds of each of these rounds? Oh, uh, yeah both of these guys have the objective focus in the back of their mind on the attacks and on the defense. So this is basically a square up here at map number two. Is it's going to be the subliners early on on the attack. No trophy systems to work with, but LAT still going to show presence. A couple players crossing over towards B. You're up looking to get aggressive here, though. Hydra already getting to work clearing up topside broken. So the offense will not have to be worried about any forward defenders here early. And now it's just how to try to figure out where are the ARs actually positioned here? Because we often see this kind of setup where Cramp will play this backside tractor, bulldozer area. But where is everybody else? Is there a second member here? That's got to be the question for New York. Just trying to at least sniff out what the setup is looking like. Now they're able to gain that info onto Cramp. The smoke is going to get invested. And this is where the subliners hit the audible. You're probably thinking that the play is going to go in towards B, but the thieves did not bite that bullet. It's now a 3v1 all left up to Sid.
That's really impressive from Ghost. The MCW stuck behind the tank. Good help from Nasty on top of that. And then Joe Deceives just getting into DVD to make sure that there is no rewrap back. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That smoke comes out and maybe you're thinking they're going to try to gut check play through dark or maybe onto the B site. Not the case. It's a full wrap back and Deeves are fully prepared for it. And that's such a heads up play because Kremp in his positioning that he had over towards B, he was able to spot anyone trying to get aggressive through mid dark. So he gives the calm that the smoke grenade gets invested, but they are not pushing. So Ghost, you turn around and he's prepared for that gunfight versus Hydra. Usually do not see people win gunfights with an MCW with the in in their hands versus Hydra with that rival. But Ghosty just doing ghosty things, man. Secures the first round. 2-2 two -two split set up here for New York. Looking to get aggressive in towards mid-cafe early. Nades also being thrown towards B Alley. So New York showing some presence early, but Thieves holding back, just kind of playing more of a default setup. They are giving away a lot of space here at mid. So the early focus for Thieves is trying to find an isolated pick maybe towards the B side. Yeah, and I love the, the route right there out of Krep because usually when people play over towards B or playing for that information, you work your way through tree, but instead he takes DVD side. So then he yeah. is also able to watch that cross so no one crosses into broken. That sets up Joe Deceives to find a double. Now it's a 4v2. Yeah, that's just a really good breakdown in terms of how Thieves isolate that setup especially over the middle of the map kismet Ooh, smg not able to win the battle versus cramp and this round is pretty much gone already to the wayside as Sid finds himself one before first shots are good stays alive delays it a little while longer but the stun keeps him weak and ghosty will find the easy follow-up yeah i mean it, it did feel like thieves were giving away a lot of space at mid but as soon as that little duality play between skies and hydra breaks down at middle joe's right there to say wait a second if there's two in cafe i've got middle of the map thank you very much yeah that's everything every ounce of information they were able to use to secure the round with only one player dropping so so far it's been phenomenal plays from lat they find the initial two first bloods on the rounds so far up 2-0 and now with a couple of players working a little bit on a streak, I'm pretty sure Joe ends that round on four in a row. You probably want to play that same exact defensive setup because subliners cannot pick it apart. Yeah. Oh, how about this though? Thieves aggression through Water Street. There is a player deep in the form of Skies. He's been seen, stun will come through. New York will be very aware of this play. And that's actually enough for Thieves to give some respect back and say, no, let's just hold on a second and make sure we can still defend this B site, which is wide open. Yeah, that's good plays though from the subliners to spread map on this round. To shut down that overextension play coming in because Nasty gains all the info of the subline is crossing over towards the B site. He's trying to hopefully line it up with the nade, but the choking system broken. gets down right in time for the bomb to get planted. Yeah, and Kismet also helps to get the team shots over towards Ghosty. So first blood gets taken care of. New York now in a 4v3 post plant. And again, their ability to hold these post plants has been superb, especially on this map. Up close and personal, Skies shakes hands with Nasty. No worries there. Hydra following up, and yeah, we're going to get a convincing round here, likely for New York. Cramp trying to do what he can, but stuck over towards Treehouse. No worries there. So yeah, it's a, it's a gut check call. LA try something different off the rip here, Jay, but this time it doesn't work out. Yeah, and it simply doesn't work out because of Skies' positioning. Like, that's all it came down to. Thankfully, he was in that spot because if you allowed LAT early on to already be in your spawn, that round could have got a lot more difficult for the subliners to try to walk away with. But they use that information. They apply the pressure over George B. They get the bomb down. They find the first blood. And they finally put one on the board. Clean. Okay, so both teams have tried some cheekiness to kind of get us started the double setup for new york in their previous defense that time it's a three-man hit for la and how about it we're not going to stop here nate stuns already out but hydra has gotten deep over towards treehouse already with help subliners fully investing on this b defense but the thing about it is bombs already being planted at a and i don't think skies has even seen this yet no skies has not seen it and the rest of the teammates haven't gotten a read it. The play was going to be over towards A. So it's going to be a 4v4 retake. Skies being the island player is able to find the first blood. And now you got the full rewrap from New York around the backhand side. Someone for Thieves needs to stop this. And it may be nasty. He's behind the play right now. Notice he's got Kismet stuck somewhere, but doesn't know exactly where. So now it's just up to Ghosty. He's in a decent spot to try to watch over the top of this bomb and maybe go uncovered, but New York are hunting him and Hydra will find him. I think a lot of that is simply off the fact that Skies gets the look towards Joe over towards yep. that little dark cafe corner. Yeah, that's just great plays, great positioning again out of Skies. The fact that he's allowing the rest of his teammates to work in sync on the deep pinch and him being the island player, gaining that info, also holding his ground over towards Water Street, secures that first kill and then... When LAT are in the man disadvantage, we obviously have a spot now that we have to watch or deciding to pick up.
Hmm. So the repositioning just too much to hand it with more players from the subliners trying to locate where they were. Successful on the 4v4 retakes. That's one thing that they are great at on this map. As they show it there. Yeah, both teams again. Those last 30 seconds. Massive towards focusing around the objective. Both teams find equal amounts of success, largely speaking. Hydra quickly again on this offense. Right already in towards Broken. Does give at least some vacancy for subliners to consider a b hit but again the, the same issue still occurs from what we had in round number one they need to figure out what this la defense actually looks like before they can hit yeah because it's still the same exact setup as he's just watching over crap but that smoke grenade getting invested is going to force a little bit of repositioning from crap but not too much because you have ghostly watching that cross lisa jodeci is finding that first blood with the bomb down yeah, it's it's one of those things that again, New York are just trying to get cute to try to move around this defense at mid map, but thieves are comfortable in this setup. So this time it's a hit kind of around through water streak that gets red. Sky's gonna be seen. Does get the bomb and slip back. That gives at least some sort of an opportunity for the subliners to do something with this round, but still this thieves defense is such a good spot. Yeah, because no one is giving up their life for free. You see the shoulders from Ghosty. Just playing for the info. Only 23 seconds remaining on the game clock for the subliners, but it's going to fall into the hands of Hydra. He can't win that one-on-one -on -one versus Cramp. They were thinking we we're going to rotate this bomb over towards B. But once he loses that one-on-one -on -one gunfight, LAT choose the right time to strike. Perfect on that round to take the advantage again. So really now, I mean, that's two offensive rounds for New York that they try to force some, hey, look at us. We're putting effort towards B. We'll see yeah. if we can move those defenders in the middle of the map. And Thieves say, no, we're good. I think that kind of goes down. Not that he's been a part of the play necessarily fully, but that's Kremp saying, guys, I don't need the help. I'm good. Like, he's the sole defender on that B side, it feels like, almost every single time. So that's good commitment, I think, from the Thieves to trust their setup. Yeah, even if Kremp is saying, I'm good, Ghosty has his cover. Through that yeah, mid alley, fast. watching that cross. So, if you are the subliners, you might have to switch it up because that slow over towards B is not working. You have to try to dominate that mid map because that's where LAT have been able to find a lot of success so far. But now they go back on the attacking side. Subliners take full control of Broken, and now this is going to slow down LAT's push. Oh, but look at this. New York going to get aggressive through laundry side. Ghosty reads it finds the kill and gets away and once again this is the middle of the map wide open Kremp gonna step in towards tank nade will land and skies will be able to trade things back so okay some of the threat has been neutralized but still advantages in certain regards to thieves here dealing with that first blood and now having a little bit more map to work with and now since i'm pretty sure nasty was in a position to still watch these players cross back out of broken mm -hmm. able to retake this positioning now with only 40 seconds left they're looking like they're gonna commit on b so kismet's gonna be here he's gonna be ready to go yeah he's in trouble it doesn't have a trophy system he's just tossed his semtex and he only has a rival now but look at the play from new york around the back sid gets two sky is right there for some extra damage last one left is nasty trying to get the regen back not gonna happen in new york the quick transition through mid catch thieves and maybe a little bit more credit to kismet for staying as live as he was because i'll tell you he was dead to rights yeah, yeah he was getting bombarded by three players on the side of lat but thankfully that's why you got a sib who simply does not miss bullets with that MCW. Him and Hydra find the team shots through that mid cut to find the initial two kills. And then Nasty only sitting at 48 HP. Sip commits on that fight and is able to secure three on the round. Just I thought LAT, they gave themselves an opportunity. You find that early first blood over towards Vanagon. Just when you were making that decision to go over towards B, you just took too long and then your player yeah. drops. Oh, how about this? You want to talk about changing it up? Hydra, aggressive. Smoke will get placed early. He drops the bomb at mid, and he's already got tank control. But for the first time, Thieves, they elect to not actually play the middle of the map. They're heavy invested in towards this B setup. So it's a little bit of a blind counter, but Hydra does get the read. And with that first blood through DVD on cramp. And usually when you find yourself with this much mid tank control, you're instantly trying to work that objective. But the bomb being down might cause them a problem because Sib eventually does get isolated. So... With all that map control around that A site, you're going to have to start to work this bomb plant in a 3v3 scenario. You just got to hope that Joe DeCease doesn't find the timing. Yeah, and that's the thing is Joe really has to help over mid-map here. He can't really keep this A site defended, so the bomb will be planted. Kismet does get naded, pops the dead silence, 1 HP, trying to stay alive, but he does pull players back to allow Hydra to confirm his train. Also, mid-map, Skies finds Ghosty, so now it's just down to Joe, and he's got a good look at both players. Damage is in, finds the first there! Oh, can't quite find the shots to the second, and you can see in his player cam, he knew he had a shot at clutching that one up.
And that was the perfect blind counter right there from the subliner because every single defensive round, LATM came out with the same setup. We're stacking over towards that mid tank area. But this time they sent three players over towards B and Hydra read it to perfection. Even though he's able to put himself in a great position, still got very, very scary towards the end because he drops that bounce on his middle, but they still secure Absolutely. it. And Hydra goes huge in the round for three. And I think importantly, again, the teamwork to pull players towards Hydra's position to make sure trades are even. And New York take a small advantage here. Again, an aggressive B set up for the defense for New York. This time, though, Thieves looking to get aggressive right immediately onto the A site. They've already popped the door. They're not even throwing tacks or nades. They're just coming straight on in. And New York are not going to have a chance to really contest against this plant unless Skies maybe find some sort of an opening. But he's just going to hold. Hydra deep. He finds one. And now, all of a sudden, LA is struggling to hold on to this post plant. It's just down to one. Yeah, Ghosty left in a 1v4. He's not even close to the bomb site. And Sib is able to locate him, take care of him. And that's a four up, four down. Clean round right there from the subliners. And I think the biggest difference right there was the fact that LAT, they invested a stun grenade at that mid tank, but it's not able to connect onto Kismet. Kismet right. realizes that the play is coming in over at that A site. He said, all right, you can work that bomb plan, but I'm 100% going to get that kill off the exit. When he finds that one Hydra across the map, being the island player working that deep pinch, he wins his one-on-one. -on -one. The rest of LAT trapped in towards Cafe. There's an easy, easy retake right there from the subline. So now be at game point. I mean, I'll tell you, this has been a creative invasion, search, and destroy. We have not seen either team play much of a default, whether that be the offensive lens nor the defensive. Maybe a little bit more on the defensive side for Thieves with this heavy mid stack, but they've only ran that about twice. And here in round number 10, or nine, pardon me, they are going to set up for some, again, aggression over towards B. First blood going to get tallied immediately, and now Thieves can just set up a normal 1-2-1 one, one split and force New York to back to make a play. Yeah, that's good plays right there from Ghosty. He realizes that the subliners haven't really been showing a lot of presence over towards A, so I'm not going to hold down this mid tank. I'm going to assist my teammate in Kremp at B. And he finds that initial kill. So now in the 4v3, if you are the subliners, you're just going to try to sniff out what this defensive setup is looking like, but LAT have all their bases covered. Absolutely, they do. Nasty even watching on the cross will make sure that these defenders in the B site get alerted. Joe also watching at mid. So again, the information game has been very strong for this Thieves defense. Although Hydra gets a prediction and ha ah. follow up from Sim. I mean, just as much as we're starting to credit that the Thieves defense should feel good. Maybe they overpeaked just a touch and New York get the punishment for it. And now you've all of a sudden got a 3v2 the other way. Ghosty shots are decent, but can't find the win. And with that, Kids is going to go for the plan. And now if you are LAT, this is where you got to catch the timing to go in your favor. Get aggressive up through courtyard. If you can catch the player off of the bomb, that's even better. But here comes the pitch from Hydra. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Wow. I mean, legitimately. That's a round right there where, again, we talked about it. The Thieves defense in the first two rounds were perfect through the middle of the map. Reading great information, counting numbers, counting crosses, everything looks so calm and collected. And maybe New York get a feel for that and say, hey, if they're gonna keep peeking us, let's just hold these hard scope dangles. They find the kills down a man, and then the immediate transition works out perfectly. That is a brilliant adjustment, and now New York find themselves 2-0 up. Yeah, that's perfect plays out of the subliners, but a mishap right there out of the Thieves, because you found that first blood in that final round. It's just the only difference on your setup now was that Joe Deceives wasn't watching over towards Water Street. He was what playing around that mid tank area. When we saw Ghosty in that position, he was throwing shoulders, playing his life really, really well, and just simply did not get picked off in that position because that's such a crucial position on a map like Invasion. You lose that side of the map, you lose all map control. And then once that first kill comes in onto Joe Deceives, you see that Nasty try to commit on the gunfight versus Hydra, thinking, all right, Hydra's going to be a little bit weak. I could potentially put down a couple shots to find this kill to keep the numbers in our favor. But that's where you got players like Sib, keeping his teammates alive, always using that buddy system to the best of their ability, and even in the man disadvantages. They find that second kill, they work the bomb plant, and they walk away with the search and destroy in a clean, clean 6-3 fashion. Now they're up 2-0 in the series. Yeah, Sib for 2K damage, he is cooking right now. Invasion oh control coming up next. And again, there are major implications on the line, really for both of these two teams. Again, the big focus is about who is going to be the last team to make it into the upper bracket at Major 4. Carolina need an LA Thieves loss to allow them to get on in with a three-way tiebreaker situation. Lots of circumstances as well for New York, but we head to a break and we come back with the invasion control right after this.
upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. SCUF Gaming is doing an ultimate giveaway where you and a friend can win a chance to go to COD Champs this year. The giveaway includes two VIP tickets, travel expenses, and more. To enter, scan the QR code on the page or go to scuff.co slash CDL and enter your email. Terms and conditions apply. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Welcome back, everybody. We've got maybe just one more map. Oh my God, I can't believe I just had to say that out loud. My whole ship with me, I've got Jeremy Study. And so far, New York all over this series, but a very creative search, destroy and invasion at least has us working towards potentially some more favorite towards thieves. Just comes down to they have to do it in reverse sweep fashion now. 
Yeah, and it's not going to be easy because they're playing Invasion Control up next, but you saw it yesterday, Alan. They were able to walk away with an Invasion Control. It's been quite some time since they were victorious at the end of that map, and it was due to them finally getting a little bit of success on the attacking side. They've always been one of the teams that can stand their ground on a defensive end. Same thing could be said for the New York Subliners, but now you need to make sure that attacking round success is going to be there because Subliners are the best team on the attacking side on this map. They average 4.2 ticks every time they spawn in on that side. So the LAT, their defense has to be on point, but you gotta get some success on the attack again. Yeah, I mean, really, it's it's been a weird stage kind of trying to evaluate the New York control because like the kind of stats just showed us, Invasion has been by far their most played overall control map. They have been stepping away from it, trying to get more reps on High Rise and Karachi this stage, but you get back to this and you definitely remember tons of offensive success for New York, which getting things started, they will be on the offense, but the first three kills go the way of LA. Hydra looking for a bit of a route, and he at least is able to find something for the subliner to talk about as there will be at least an opportunity to move over towards B again. Yeah, not the ideal start that you want if you are the subliners, but you got a Hydra who's able to make stuff happen. Somehow, some way finds that snap onto Dota Seeds, and now it opens up that B point for his teammates to put the game clock at a pause. Hydra is gonna fall. And when LAT finding a couple kills, they can still apply pressure to get him off. Mm, Ghosty was actually trying to maybe try to zone off the spawners or subliners over towards Ice Cream side, but a couple of the shots deep through the middle of the map push him back away. Sky's in trouble. The forced battle from Kremp comes through. The pit oh. for Skies shuts down not just Kremp, but also Nasty. And with that, now you've got Hydra zoning out the B zone. Sky's able to reinforce with the trophy and a chance for the second ticket progress to possibly be locked. But every time they push out, LAT are locating those players. So that's already three dead in the feed. Kismet the soul man over at this B point. And that now leads to an all four dead. All of LAT now can put all their focus over towards this B street because this is where the subliners are coming. Yeah, this is a great start for the side of L.A., like Ghosty in particular. we got to remember that he had a absolutely unreal control against Vegas. 3-0, he only had one offensive kill, remember that. So his defensive presence continues to be a problem here for New York as Kremp will take down Hydra. The clock continues to tick, and now all of a sudden Kremp is zoning you out through ice cream. Yeah, this is their last push if you are the subliners. You might not even have an opportunity to even get close to the point because Kremp is able to get aggressive up through ice cream, catch a double. Now with only 12 seconds left, subliners are looking like they're going to commit over towards A. Yeah. And yeah, Ghosty just doing his normal nonsense this time through mid. Seven and one start and New York will only find nine kills and a single tick of progress. That Thieves defense is looking mighty fine here on Invasion. Yeah, that was perfect, man. And it starts with the perfect start off that they had. They found every single kill around that middle map. Don't allow any of the players from the subliners to be nuisances or playmakers to work their way over towards A. So an ideal start if you are the Thieves to give yourself the heavy advantage going forward in the rest of this invasion control. You only have one segment to make up for. Let's just do the easy one and get B out of the way. Yeah. This is kind of the exact same situation that we saw with Vegas. It was almost a, a copy paste to how that first round had gone. Opening shots for New York. We'll tag up a couple of the offensive players on transition over towards B, but the trophy system is down. Ghosty has found himself in. And some shots over towards Sib will keep the New York defense a bit split here up and over ghosty still doing it here on control eight and one off the start first tick already gone uh, first tick already in and you see lat there just trying to get that second segment guaranteed as the subliners are going to be a little bit late to the party finally the pressure is going to be here but effective trades coming in from the thieves crep on five in a row yeah, could possibly get himself an early cruise missile, but no. Shut down by Sib. Sky's also finding kills over towards the backside of the palace walls, but the second tick locked the third on the way. New York may just chalk this and try to just play out the lives a little bit more because there's really not much of an opportunity for the defense to come back through and contest this third tick, and that will indeed be the case with extra kills actually happening here for LA. Sib up top trying to hold off the OE, but not successful, and with that now, Thieves can work around the back. Yeah, this is perfect for LAT. Can they find a couple kills so to take care of this second wave of the subliners players? Ghosty is able to find one, but Joe Deceive is going to drop. So now if you are a ghost, you want to try to play your life, but Sky's able to sniff him on out. So Subliner is able to whipstand that first push coming in. And now all the map control in their favor. Yeah. But 
Thieves coming off spawn. Whoa, shots getting through the walls here. Sky stealing a significant amount of damage over towards Joe. That is enough for Sim to push out. And yeah, that little duality play works out perfectly. Joe still keeps the play though alive for LA with a double of his own. And now all of a sudden, Kidman's in trouble. He just has to try to hold his ground as best as humanly possible because there are no other defenders nearby towards A. The only real help would be from Sky's deep towards the spawn. And as Sim comes off, he is able to get right back through to make sure the defense can hold off the A play. He's just shooting, shooting. That's all Sim is doing with that MCW. Not able to find that kill onto Grant, but it's already job well done. Second wave has been shut down, and now Subliners take control of the map again, but this time the difference is that Skies is showing presence over towards Bridge. Great plays from LAT to isolate onto him, so now you just got to find that next wave a couple of kills so you can work your yeah. way out of spawn. Only 13 lives remaining here for the LA Thieves, so they will have to, again, be very efficient on this next approach, and this may help. Joe tagged up from behind by Kismet. Easy finish for Skies. Hydra trying to rotate over towards the A zone as Kismet's done well to not just keep his life, but hold this middle of the map position, forcing LA to hit the OE once again. Now with only 30 seconds left, this is basically going to be their last attempt. Trying to find some success at this A point. They find the initial two kills. You have to make this play count, though. Go see a nasty trying to work behind enemy lines. Yeah, Kismet still just kind of floating, depending on what his ARs behind him see. Threat, though, for the Thieves in Laundry. This guy's playing deep towards Water Bridge. He's going to have to watch this cross, and the kills uh -oh. are really solid. Sib trying to play his life deep over towards the tank. You see him get stunned. Nasty with a follow-up on the elimination, but the spawns are close for New York. They don't really get fully bottled out, and Skies from deep on Water Street will find the last two. So the three ticks do get locked. LA hold an advantage through our first set of offenses, but New York, more importantly, they do hold off that A play. Yeah, that was perfect out of New York subliners. The majority of that round, even with two minutes on the game clock, they were dominating over towards Water Street and also around that middle of the map. So LAT only had like two to three attempts at actually getting over towards that A point. But every single time the subliners are able to put themselves in a position to shut it down. So all tied up at one. New York going back on the attack with trophy systems this time around. Mm. And they also got to make up two segments. Need the case. That's Steve's defense, man, I'll tell you. Since that match versus Vegas on Friday, it just looks like it's a little bit more rejuvenated with the offensive success they're starting to build as well. Start to feel the confidence for LA. Beaming just a touch. Opening exchange leads to the focus for New York just staying on the B zone. First tick off. <laughs> nice shots from Joe. A little turn and turn over through DVD. Sim trying to secure the trade. Not going to happen as Kismet was the last one standing in LA. And we're quick to recover after just one tick has been earned. Yeah, the world can't believe that. And even could hide you because if that player came, he said, What? He finds that kill. It's still Subline is holding on to the map control. But when he falls, all of LAT reinforced their numbers over through B Street. And now the Subline is forced to fight their way out of spawn again. Yeah, this B defense for LA has been so damn good. Still able to shut down Kremp, but Nasty's right in position over towards Pillars. That will work out for now three in a row for him. Kismet Hydra secure a couple of exchanges, but still look at the life lead. I mean, LA off to the races once again. Six life advantage. Clock will stop for a moment here with New York getting over towards B, but LA coming off the close spawn are looking like they want to contest again. Yeah, they're still going to try to contest it. They also find that kill through the map, so you have the numbers. Put yourself in a position to not allow this second segment to get complete, but the subliners might have made that decision for them as they find three in the feed. Prep trying to make a miracle play happen. Sky's dancing with him, not able to find the kill, and that should lead to time being extended. Yeah, extra 60 looks like a guarantee, but still a three life edge here for Thieves on this defense. Plus, should be a read on how New York is trying to come back around through this OE. Joe, good shots in towards Sib, but damaged up to allow Hydra to find the easy bounce back. Ramp also gets a read that Kiz is playing around the back here. So again, Thieves will spawn close to A. They've got a player deep towards Water Street, and they know the threat's coming around the back. Sky oh. doesn't quite finish his food versus Joe Deceives, and both players will just kind of exist a little while longer until Hydra can come through. Yeah, Hydra already earns himself a cruise missile. So now you have players from the subline is contesting in the back of your spawn, but off the respawn, Kremp is able to take care of both of them. So now you have accounted for every player on the subliners. With only 50 seconds left, you just want to fight for that mid-map control. Locating Kismet was all you really needed to do. Now subliners are forced to overextend. 
Oh, good quick isolation though towards Ghosty, trying to hold off the New York subliners from the water bridge, plus a kill through mid map. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. There we go. That's three dead. You could possibly call the cruise missile in here if you want to. Sip still finding kills through mid map. Oh and no. It looked like a perfect setup for the thieves. And now all of a sudden, New York are starting to rip them apart. The spawns are still relatively close towards garage for LA, but the first tick is in. The second is getting stacked. It just comes down to can they confirm it because the kills for LA are starting to come through, Jay. Yeah, they found the first one in towards Mannequin and Karamp again is able to find that kill onto Hydra before that second segment gets complete. I thought the subliners gave themselves an opportunity, but the 304 stack just simply was not there. You went out LAT to reinforce with their numbers off of a couple kills that went in their favor. And now with only 20 seconds left, last push. New York stacked up for Water Street. You have Skies on a pinch around the back. He's been seen. No. For Kisman on the interior. Siv also wins one. Plus, he gets a second. Skies is just trying to hold off LA. They're spawning so far away. Three members are stacked. Second tick is in. Third on the way. Trophy systems are here for New York. Can anyone get the kills if you're LA? And Nate from Ghosty allows him to slide in and get the contest plus the finish. Oh, Ghosty was so big for Vegas. Then he came through here once again to at least save the defensive round for LA. Oh my God. I don't know how LAT worked their way back on in. Thankfully, there was no trophy systems. And also that update comes in for the trophy. So even if they had to, four people coming off the respawn, a son and an eight is guaranteed to connect. But that was in a split second, man. You see everything getting bombarded in towards the bathroom area. Just the nades too strong from LA right at the right moment before that segment gets complete. And now they give themselves an opportunity here on the attack to just get a couple segments and they get ground five defense. Absolutely the case. Wow, the heroics for Ghosty on evasion control though continue. How did that trophy system not delete that Zephyx? The world may never know. But Ghosty gets taken down. LA on the zone. Nasty following up. Good kills coming through. New York still trying to force the issue here. Pistol out for Nasty and almost gets the beatdown, but not quite to happen, and things will stay pretty neutral here through the middle of the map. Yeah, and the sublines know what they need to do. We can't allow the LAT squad to get three segments completed, so they came out swinging with the aggression over towards B. Eventually, with Sib falling, is now going to give up all the map control on this side of the map to LA. So the first segment is going to be in, and I don't know if the sublines are going to attempt it. Oh, they're waiting for the cruise missile. So now they go. Second ticket progress, not going to get confirmed, though. As everyone backs off. Trophy system not in place as LA get back on towards the zone. New York taking shots over the top. Not able to fully connect onto the kills, but there's damage to at least keep these from stacking for now. But the kills are still just so darn good. That's going to be the extra 60. That's beautiful plays right there from LAT. They knew that the cruise missile was going to get invested, but when it falls into the hands of Kremp, who's watching that overextension, just winning that one-on-one -on -one gun gunfight versus Kismet got the job done. So now we extend the time. So all the segments are made up for. If you are LAT, you just want to make sure you simply just don't get out slayed in the rest of this round. And no one has any idea that Kremp has gotten through the back here. This is how Thieves can set up this offense. What can Kremp see in this position back towards gas? Can his teammates find kills from the front? This will force the New York spawns to be deep around the backside of that blue building. And Kremp's just going to sneak on in, find Skies through mid. And here we go. There's a chance for Joe to help stack this. Yeah, it's going to be a two-man stack onto the point. You wanted to guarantee your defense in round number five. Just this one segment gets it done. It's not if you are the subliners. You got to work your way in. You got to work it quickly. Thankfully, Hydra finds the first Skies effective on the trade. Retake it. Now they take the map again. So much time to play with here, though, if you're L.A. New York trying to work back the middle of the map. Sim, good shots over the top. Should be traded out around the backside of the tank here and will be. Nasty with the pistol. We'll get it done. Back and forth we go, though. Where does New York spawn off of this? They'll still spawn backside gas, but the OE is under threat, and they have to really bounce back and make sure that blue position and that inside rugs position gets contested. Yeah, players are coming off the respawn. Got to slow down a little bit. Just be prepared for the pressure going to be right in front of you. Unfortunately, Sib was not. Kremp finds that initial kill. So a lot of map control currently in favor of the Thieves. They're just looking for this next couple of kills so they can work until the point. Yeah, Kismet, good read on the Nasty. It's been a slow map for him, but he's picking it up here. MCW back in hand, but Ghosty holds down the trigger. Trade by Sib is decent. We stay 12v12. Skies once again back over towards the water street. Sib trying to hold off the OE. Everyone else focused on mid-map, but Skies is starting to get in trouble. 
Hodge is starting to get overwhelmed, but at least your teammate is taking the map away from LA. Hodge pushes right up through that mid courtyard, finds that first kill, puts down shots onto the second, and is now keeping Krep in a position to either play for that kill or make it a very difficult situation to be in. But they get into the point. Unfortunately, Jonas Eves is going to fall, but this is the last chance. Yeah, Skies from the interior also follows up on the Krep, and yeah, I think that may have been just about it. Nasty will drop. 7v6, but not enough time for LA coming from the ice cream spawns to even have a threat towards the lives nor the zone. So, like you mentioned, the damage dealt by the Thieves' offense will work out. Just comes down to can that defense continue to be impressive, especially around the B zone, because New York, oh, we're this close to finishing off a 3-1 map here. And this is a stat that I'm going to hate to bring up, but it's a stat that stands true. LAT yeah, know, in man. round five is a control. They have a current record of one and 11. Doesn't matter if they're on the attacking side or the defensive side. Whenever they get down all the way to the end, they tend to struggle a little bit. So you just got to make sure that your defense is able to stand strong. I think if you are LA, it has to be off the start off. Can't allow Hydra to slip his way behind enemy lines up through treehouse for that first kill, but also dominate those gunfights around on the other map. Just forcing subliners to walk right into your preams at B Street. Yeah. The round five has not been kind, but at the same rate, how much of that has been them spawning on offense because their offense has not particularly been great. That may not matter. Oh this my God. <laughs> immediately. Sib, Skies, Hydra, all combined for kills. Now you've got two members already onto the A zone and they're just gonna play for kills here through the middle of the map. Sib's got a good look over towards Nasty. The follow up over towards Laundry's looking pretty decent. Skies trying to spam things out as well. Hydra trying to follow up, not gonna work. Second tick is in, third on the way. Here come Thieves for the challenge. Can they even get here? to touch this in time. Skies are on the back, not able to find the kills, and it's Joe to clear. Thieves will hold on to the A zone. Oh, that's good plays right there from LAT. I thought with the spalls all the way at Treehouse, they weren't going to have an opportunity to work that A point, but the subliner decided to go for a two-man stack instead of a three. And that leads to them only getting two segments done, but already showing presence over at this B Street. You got Nasty trying to contest to mid-cut. He's able to find the first, slip behind enemy lines, and find the second. So now the subliners have to work out of this one. Last one left. Whoa, how has he been able to finagle two? Cramp still dancing. Tries to get away, but Hydra keeps the play alive. So New York off spawn. 42 seconds on the clock. They've got some forward presence, but Hydra shut down towards top treehouse. And now all of a sudden, the numbers for Thieves can start to swarm back over towards B. Yeah, they have the numbers. It's just do. Are they prepared for all the trophies that's been getting invested from the subliners? Because they are playing to extend this game clock. First segment already going to be in, but LAT just always here to be to play annoying. Like, they're just so annoying at this B point. Hydra trying to find something over towards A. Very desperate in nature. Shut down. And the Thieves defense looking good. Two life advantage. But the biggest enemy right now for New York is the clock. 15 seconds. Has to be some sort of a break here towards B. Nasty trying to cross back over towards Pillars. Gets shut down. Cramp right behind him. Damage is out. But the kills coming the way of Joe Deceives. New York able to possibly find a way to jump back over. But Joe is fully healthy. Holding his ground. Pistol is out. Not quite able to hang. Cramp last one left. Pistol. Sib trying to keep himself alive on the zone. Shut down. Last Last attempt for New York has been pushed off, and Thieves will send us to a map four with a round five defensive win. Oh, that's perfect plays right there from the LA team, man. When the start off wasn't the best, they gave up the early two segments at A. But every single time when they were able to control the map, control that middle side, and force the subliners to just completely just bombard their way up through B Street, that's exactly what the LA Thieves were preparing for, and they shut it down every single time. We're talking about the number one attacking team on Invasion Control. They could not find success on any of the attacking rounds. And that's LAT just standing strong on defense. Well played. Well played indeed. Another great map from Ghosty on the defensive side in particular. 16 of his kills come in that direction, but the 6,100 damage from Cramp topped by the 7K by Joe Deceives. 32 and 28, 23 non-traded, also 15 assists. The guy was everywhere. So Thieves... They stave off, and I mean, again, Joe was the hero to even give themselves a chance in the first place at stopping this round five defense. You could also go back to Ghosty, like I was saying, versus Vegas. He did a lot of this as well. Held on to that round three offensive run that New York almost put to the finish line. And this Thieves' control on invasion is really starting to spark some inspiration, I would say. 
as they get at least to another map. And I think the thing about it for Thieves is it's not just coming by individuals. Sure, at times it is, but collectively, their defense is looking really, really good through the middle of the map. Oh, yeah. And yesterday was all on Ghosty. Today, you get the players, everybody else but Ghosty, because Joe Disease and Crap, the way that they were able to shut down that mid map and be pressure every single time was just phenomenal plays. The subliners, though, you got to think about in that final round, when you get a clean four, dead, you spawn them all the way across the map. All you realistically need is a snack at that point. But two players still playing for kills didn't allow you to extend that game clock. So you got more time to find one set of kills to work that B point. And that is a mishap for them now. Going forward, they definitely have to clean that one up. But LAT stay alive in this series. Now they're forcing a map four in sub base where yeah. it's going to be very difficult because LAT haven't played it at this stage with this squad. Well, and it's also been one of their worst hard points on the year, yeah. even when they were playing it quite a bit, kind of throughout the end of Major 2 into Major 3. A couple of close results here and there. So, you know, again, it doesn't necessarily look as bad as I think the overall record will, but it is one of those situations when they're playing up against other teams that are good sub base squads, they are often getting beat up pretty badly. So there is kind of this call right now for LA that you better have something sparked right immediately. And having not played this map yet through this qualifier with a chance to possibly get to a map number five, where again, the seedings and everything going on for what happens at the major four, uh, it will be, I think, up in the air. I mean, Carolina obviously rooting for a certain particular set of results, but New York are also looking to kind of cement themselves as being a top three team with a win here. Yeah, sublines are going to be feeling good, though, going into the sub base because the last time they played it, they beat the hell out of the Minnesota Rocker. 250 to 38. They were winning every single rotation. Flawless on the holds, 100% on that category. But then the break opportunities, they didn't even have a chance to because Minnesota were never set up at one <laughs> yeah. of these new hills early on. And for the other side, if you are LAT, based off of what we saw in map number one, you can win rotations, but your setups need to be a lot better. And that is the struggle for them on Subway. They're second overall in rotation win percentage, but that hold percentage sitting at seventh, you know that on a map like Subbase, if you're not finding successful holds, which a, a bunch of these hills are full 60s, you're not gonna have a good time because they're 11th and breaking. They barely get any opportunities to do that. The other side of things, I think you look toward the individuals. Sib has had a great series at this point and you wonder how much impact he may have individually, you know, kind of stepping into the limelight in this qualifier for New York. He has played his best COD, I would say, this year oh, yeah. in this particular stage. So if he could continue to shoot like he is, he may be a problem here that LA need to find some sort of a resolve for because flat out, he had a couple of takeover moments on a map like Vista, let alone what he could possibly do with an AR in sub-base. Yeah, I, that's the biggest thing. It's like a player of his caliber, you throw him on a bunch of these power spots where they're all head glitches and MCW preferred. Should, should, Sim should be prepared to have a field day here on this sub-base. But the vibes are still there. You see the smiles out of the subliners. They're still feeling confident to close out this series. But just based off of that one series they have versus Minnesota, all their stats got boosted. Yeah, yeah. This is for the overall season, though. So, again, the trends and the patterns, the New York card point may not have been as convincing as we would have maybe figured with especially players like Hydra and Zip having the stage that they are. But across the season, New York has been pretty darn successful in being able to at least find points per 60. Just comes down to can they continue to have that same success here versus a Thieves team that is, again, kind of not just trialing this map, but trying to add it possibly into the pool. And we're gonna get, again, the Thieves starting off on the favorite side, looking for the first set of kills. New York also very wisely just kind of playing their lives out, looking for the same, and the first two kills will allow the subliners to start making their move. Oh, that is perfect. That is utter perfection right there to the subliners. The show presence over two top comms will find every single kill in the feed before they even start thinking about that objective. You spawn a couple players from LAT all the way across the map, but they're able to find those kills on the players from the subliners trying to flip those spawns. Cramp trying to hit a router on the backside of Top Snow. Does get shut down, but Thieves will get back into the hard point. They've also saved themselves from being flipped on the left side of the map, at least for now. Skies up top at glass. Good double from him. Ghosty has to deal with multiple threats, and it will be the combination of Skies and Sib that best Sib. So the scrap time kind of mildly goes the way of New York with the focus over towards rotation. Thieves have to bunker up around the hill. Oh, and Nassi is going to get isolated, so he's going to spawn all the way across the map. Or is he not? He's actually going to spawn it towards the back because oh, at the same time, Kismet is going to spawn. So he blocks that ball, that blocks that back spawn and allows Nasty to reinforce his way back into the play. They're able to hold on to the first push, but Subline is still trying to be here to contest. Hydra just pushes right through that stun that got tossed. It looked like Nasty had covered all of his bases, but I was going to say, kind of Hydra makes something out of nothing here. 
with the surprise spawn out, Thieves have to eliminate the, this play from the top side because New York, they've kept the hard point neutral. Ghosty in and around the hill, does well to catch himself a couple, but Sib up top is too much to deal with. And now all of a sudden, New York have P3 spawning to their backside and Thieves trapped up over towards the left side of the map. Yeah, this is not the situation you want to be in if you are LA. Hopefully you can find a couple kills that makes your rotation gunfights a little bit easier, but still the feed going to be lit up in white. As the subliners walk away with the final couple of seconds there at P2, you have Sim still contesting on this overextension, trying to control majority of this middle of the map. He knows that the spawns are going to be right on him. How many more can he get? Only able to find two, but subliners take the lead, and now they're running up the score. Yeah, Sim will just spawn up and be a part of this defense immediately. Hydra, though, dropping around the backside. Skies also loses up top. So here comes the threat immediately for Thieves, and they actually get the spawn out already. So Kismet has to get off the hard point, just trying to find kills. And wow, that is absolutely perfect for Thieves. And they're still finding the kills, getting the read that New York have already spawned out. A great moment here for LA. Already showing improvements in that break. Percentage 11 for overall on the map, but since they haven't played it in quite some time. You best believe they're getting reps in practice. And it showed right there. But only for a little bit of time because the subliners able to reinforce their way back on in for the final 20. You now have Skies contesting off this rotation. And all he wants to do is find a couple kills, but guarantee that he's staying alive. Yeah, it, that almost felt maybe a little bit too free right there for New York. Hydra goes uncovered. He gets around the back. And after what was a flawless break for LA, they don't really stay to take advantage of the opportunity that they created for themselves. So now you have to get done over towards four. And Skies is still teeing off in your back line. Kismet now from the front trying to split the focus. Pistol out does well, but the Thieves will still spawn a couple of members nearby at the hard point stays neutral. Yeah, but Sam is still here to contest it. He's now allowing his teammates to get into the play. A swan out for one player in Joe Deceives. He has yet to be read. He's just hoping that his teammates can find a little bit of success on the backside, but not a single player from LA find any kills. So it's a subliner successful on the break. Looking like they're gonna walk with this final 30. Yeah, definitely is. Touch with Hydra watching over the middle of the map. He sees the challenge out from top glass as well and says, that's all I need. It's just to transmit that info and make my way over to try to influence P5. Not going to happen, though. LA, decent bounce back. Again, it just feels a little bit odd that this is the way the map is playing out right now. Looks like New York have a huge advantage. They miss out on about 15 of the 25 seconds of scrap time. So LA giving themselves a lifeline here with their setup around P5. Yeah, they're going to be fully set up at this P5, but they want to find these kills around this P2 area so they can flip the subliners over towards Warehouse. As Jodas, he's at least able to find one. Not at least the Kismet spawning at Warehouse. He's just hoping that the rest of the teammates can find a couple more kills so you can control this hill fully. Stagger kills coming out for LA. New York battling back, though. Once again, hard point goes open. Joe, a slow start was at 1 in 10. Really starting to find a groove now, though. Caster cursed it as Kismet takes it down from behind. And Kismet inside the hard point can just try to stay concealed as long as possible. Nasty cooking up a frag. That will deal damage but not get the kill. Nasty also receiving some damage of his own. And then Hydra saves Kismet. He has been back here for forever. Nasty's probably still trying to calm him out. Eventually he gets dealt with, but New York with the numbers could at least still keep some of the scrap time going their way. And this is where the game can start to get out of hand. If you allow the subliners to, to slay around that middle map area, without you finding any success at the end of this P5. But the one-on-one -on -one gunfight secured out of Nasty. Able to walk away with the final 10, but still those spawns going to play a big factor here. You got to try to flip them, and it's going to fall into the hands of Nasty, who's hitting a route. Shut down, though. Good isolation from New York. Game still relatively tight, but LA losing out on numbers. Not going to have much of a chance to soak up time here on the first hill. So the game clock is currently winning this first hard point. Cramp staying alive. Backside staircase. This could be well, at least for LA to get back through and try to chow off the rest of this New York play. But Kismet, again, beats Ghost into the punch with the pistol. Hydra shut down, and now it's just up to Kismet to see how much he can find. He does take down two, but LA get into the hard point. Yeah, LAT get into the hard point. Still a lot of time to fight for at this P1. Potential lead change if they can walk away with the final 20. They're trying to at least force the game five. So let's step aside and hear other team sounds from the West Coast. Hold that. Nice. Okay. Let's stop tower, though, guys. All right, listen. Slow the game down here. You're pushing right? Help yeah. yeah. them right. Yeah, push it right here. Yeah, listen. They might not ammo spawn. Right there. Shoot on. Yeah, listen. They're pushing in ammo. Almost got, right? Yeah, yeah. Ammo window. Ammo window. Ammo window. I'm pushing right here. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Looking for one in the back, probably. Yeah, one's up here, too. I saw him. Front ammo. It's front ammo. It's top two window. I didn't green box in here. Green box. Sure, too. Top two window. I'm looking for one. Dead. Spawn. 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 Yo, 
Put it on one shot, mate. I can't lie. They're just locked. No, no, no. I have a lot of steps. Yeah, I'm on your steps. Okay, one step left. Window dead. Intense. Tibby's missed. One second. 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 I'm on shield, I'm on shield. Last year, we're kids in pocket. Let's break this fucking hill here. Yep, yep, yep. Take a left. Listen, listen, make your way. I'm going to pick the one. 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 I'm going to pick the one.
Sky's trying to watch around the back. Kismet hitting over through May's side. Hardpoint once again opens up. No one on the interior for now. Just needs six seconds though. Cramp starting to pop off five in a row. Hydra killed down. Oh! Following up. Oh! Hydra saves the day. New York still alive, but again, LA can just rotate if they want to. They only need four seconds. Yeah, Sublinus can no longer wait in here. If you are LAT, you already have the spots for next, so why not hit this old hard point? Because you know where the Subliners are going to be coming from. Is they're going to be here to apply the pressure. They can still close it out here. You got a person in the hard point, but he is going to fall. And now that's four dead. Thankfully, you got the swans over towards new. You just need one new hold. Hydra has to go absolutely incredibly massive. Up and over. Finds himself. It might be an opportunity for a couple, but he's just going to back up the block spawn. But you got to also keep them off the hard point. Shots are decent. 248, 227. You got to stay in the hill if you're LA. And they are just barely able to. The hit from New York starting to mass up from Tunnel, but they can't get there in time. And LA will see us go the distance to a game five in our final online match. Man, that was such a back and forth hard point. And even when we got to the second half of the game, it was still a 15 to 20 point difference. The subliners had a response though to blow the game a little bit open up by 40 to 50 points. But a great hold at that P3. But P4 and P5 was LAT from start to finish. And at the end of the game, it was individuals making big time plays. If Nasty doesn't stay alive and pop that double at P4, subliners are close to this out in four. But he makes that individual play. You change that over towards the p5 you keep the spawns for p1 to p2 and that hold percentage where we talked about that they needed to fix on in the later half of this game the setups were a lot better the crossfires everything was clicking the communication is always firing and lat on a map that they have yet played in this stage on a map that they have sucked at all throughout the season they get it done versus subliners and now they force the game five it could not have gotten much tighter than that friends wow what a map number four just narrowly able to squeak it out new york could not quite find a way to flip the map around not towards p2 not again towards that third and final hill but it doesn't get much closer than that in terms of how a sub base goes back and forth that double helix of a game flow and now we start to talk an interesting storyline because we got map number five the win means so much for so many of these squads, a 3-2 win for LA puts them into the upper bracket, sends Carolina to the ninth, LAG get in on the eighth. If it's a 3-2 though, for the side of New York, they secure themselves, of course, the upper bracket, Carolina gets in, LA stays in, and LAG bounce out. So there's still a lot on the line here. And the interesting thing about all of this, Jay, is that this is a map that has not been great for New York and LA haven't played in some time. So it should yeah. be interesting. Yeah, high rise is going to be fun, man. Who wants it more in this series? The final match of the online qualifiers. Just one more map left. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Champs Tracer Pack is available now. The bundle includes the Reaper Operator Skin, Ripper Weapon Blueprint, Death Stair Weapon Blueprint, Cuts Deep Charm, two calling cards, two emblems, and two weapon stickers. Use these items to both Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Call of Duty Warzone. Available in store now using Call of Duty Points.
Welcome back, everybody. We've got one more map here. We're not going to let Online Modern Warfare 3 end so quietly. Lots on the line, but not just for this overall match. Again, if you've been following along the subliners on Twitter, they have been pushing this uh, one ring, an extra ring from their championship year last year, and they did announce their winner. Big congratulations to Andrew Gonzalez, who will have an absolute treat, I'm sure, displaying that guy. Uh, and if you want to see the full video and everything that's been happening with the promo for it, you can, of course, head on over towards Twitter slash X at the subliners and give them some love. Really cool opportunity, I think, just to kind of share back with the community some of the successes that they found last year, Jay. Especially if he's a subliners fan, if if he's one of these Optic or Atlanta phase fans, like he's going to be like, damn, what the hell do I want this ring for? But <laughs> hopefully he is a New York supporter because he's going to be supporting these guys now in this game number five. A potential reverse sweep on the cards for LAT. We talked about it a little bit before this map, before we went to break. LAT have yet to play it in this stage, but they hold a great record. And so do subliners. Yeah, I mean, it's legitimately, it looks like just overall on the season, a true square up map. So what can you find here between these two teams? And what was a very, kind of remember map two, about as creative as an invasion search as we've seen to this year. Will we have something similar here on high rise? As will be LA starting off on the offensive side. Again, the numbers are so good for both these two teams. Not much separating them on either side. Yeah, the only thing that's really separated them is that first blood fight. Cause Subline is hitting at 10th overall on this map compared to the Thieves who are third. So they usually find that opening duel. But so far into this round, it's slow and steady wins the race. You just want to try to get a feel out of what the setup is looking like from New York. But with them having so much presence over towards B Street, it's not going to be easy to work this B site. Now, Sib just kind of floating, playing this however he so chooses to. His Hydra staying very safe. Sky's the same thing, just kind of watching over the top of the trash can through B Alley. Sib not seeing anything in the cross, and as he drops down, it's Joe Deceives from the ladder. Finds the free first blood. We stay 4v3. No plant yet, and New York are actually looking to contest this. Yeah, because you could already see Kismet has worked his way from that A site right in towards B. So Jodo sees if he doesn't check this corner, and he is going to do so. Not able to find the kill, but the trade is going to be there. Number's still in favor of LA. Now you can work that band plant. Yeah, say so Hydra's just trying to sneak his way in, see if he can find one more kill, put a little bit more pressure on the clock. Ah. Not happened, and now Skies has been seen over through mid. Can't finish the kill through that mid fence line. And so 3v1 post plant set up and Skies just does not have any room to work with. This would be a miracle 1v3. Yeah, this is going to be tough. He's trapped. Every single player from LAT had their eye and sights pre-aimed onto him. But they come out on the opening attack where they stand a really good chance at finding success on. Two of the top teams that we have on the attacking side for high rise search and destroy. And with LAT finding that early first blood, catch some good timing onto Sib. They just keep the numbers traded in their favor and secure the first round. Every round is going to feel so important. I mean, it, it, I think the biggest thing here is, you know, again, upper bracket implications. Set yourself set yourself up for a better chance at yeah. making playoffs if you're a bubble squad. But at the same rate, if Thieves could find a way just to win this match, not only did they get the upper bracket, they also get a little bit more cushion between the other ah. teams that are tied right below them. But a first blood this time for Kismet has New York feeling decent about their chances to get to B quickly. That's a big first blood, especially onto Krem, because you know how aggressive he likes to be on the map, but goes the instantly with the response. Gets that kill and gets out of dodge. It's still being a 3v3, Ooh. but Hydra is able to strike. Keep the man advantage in favor of New York. Yeah, Joe, he had a lot of damage in early. Ghosty trying to find a way to convert on it. Not going to happen as Skies from topside propane. Takes us to another 1v3 situation. Nasty good for the first. Time to finesse this maybe a touch, but I believe Skies has just seen him go towards bottom blue. Sure feels that way. Hydra's repositioned. Skies still watching over the top of a head. He essentially down low in the underground, and no way he continues on that 1v3 rampage. And that's basically the same exact round that LAT had in their opening attack. You find that early first blood. You know, apply the numbers over towards that B site. Trade effectively. Put the bomb down in a 3v1. And then Sky's just gaining that info. Not allowing Nancy to get away. Secures that final kill of the round. It's just it helps with the subliners, especially on high rise. Even though they're 10th overall in first bloods, when they find first bloods, yeah. That conversion rate is number one. So yeah. they show it there. I mean, they've that's been their success story pretty much throughout the entirety of the season. Their ability to convert on first bloods has been nearly unrivaled. Even though maybe at times it doesn't come all that often. So back to the offense, go LA. Trophy systems in place for both squads. Hydra, this may lead to something a little bit cheeky. Checks over towards maybe a delayed route towards bottom blue. Nothing here. Sib, though, in trouble over towards the outside at elevator. Now puts a lot of stress on this New York defense to move around. Yeah, it's the second time that Sib has dropped in that positioning for that first blood. So now you're just forcing the rest of the sub players to 
Try to cover a little bit more ground. They've already taken B Street, I mean A Street away from them. And according to Blue, but even with Kismet falling, Hydra effective on the trade, still numbers advantage LA. Yeah, and it's still so difficult for New York to rotate back to defend this B plant. So you're gonna get a 3v2 post plant set up here. Hydra. Oh, he sneaks immediately Wait a on for the defuse. <gasps> Wait a second, Sky just has to play bodyguard. Ghosty deals with the first kill with the beat down, stops the defuse. Oh, just narrowly. I love the idea from Hydra, but LA not to be bamboozled by it. Come through nicely to hold on to the post plant. Oh, thankfully, you got to go see your team because the player who was sitting at top of pain did not peek down one time at that bomb site. And it was like 75% done right there from Hydra. As it was a beautiful play call at the moment. Almost secures the defuse, but Ghosty just catches him with the beat down. So it's been all out attack so far for both of these squads. That time, another first blood onto Sim. You cannot afford to be that first blood yeah. to fall at B Street. Absolutely, especially in his position, trying to stay aggressive on the backside of the elevator like that. Nasty running the same route. This time, though, how about New York? Quick gut check call over towards A. Stuns towards Krem's direction. He cannot check over the top of the site, but Hydra is trapped a little bit over towards the front side at mid windows. Good help across the map from LA. Yeah, Hydra gets a little bit too aggressive right there. He sees a stun connect. On to Kremp, but not able to isolate in the one-on-one -on -one gunfight. So now it's already the subline is in the man disadvantage. Joe is even in a perfect position to contest this B site. He puts down shots, find the first, find the second. Mr. Game 5 strikes again. And Skies is in trouble. Not just for the 1v4, but he's also trapped here at the underground steps. LA may have lost track of him for a moment, but still no bomb. And again, stuck kind of between a multitude of different Thieves defenders. No worries whatsoever for LA. Wow, I mean, legitimately, that is an unbelievable double up from Joe inside the site. He just takes over in these game fives, man. What was it, the stat before the map even started? He's at a 1.3 overall KD. He plays with the utmost confidence. And when you put down other shots at the Sib, Kismet tries to keep his friend alive and they both eventually line up for him. So LAT starting to get a little bit of separation here in this map number five. And if you're Carolina, you're sitting there like, what the hell are New York doing? <laughs> well, that's very true. Got to be rooting for Sib to stay alive here in the first 25 seconds or so. And this time he surely should as he's not going to play aggressive towards Elevator Alley. Nades for LA though. Tossed over towards the windows and they actually catch one onto Hydra. So another first blood for the Thieves. Great news here for LA as they can just pause for a moment, give themselves a setup and play the rest of this round now with the man advantage. Yeah, they have been dominating that first blood column so far. And it's now forward to one. Early man advantage for them on the attacks. But they prefer on a map like high rise but kismet taking a lot of ground toward top heli his position is going to be known and now he's forced yeah. to give it up this is a bit of a window right there for sure but a little bit of a killing of the clock has happened kismet now just trying to play the pixel peak through the barrels cramp thinking about it skies up top denied la perfectly prepared and now sib has to try to follow up behind oh. it's gonna happen it's a flawless round for la it's just easy when you're fighting the initial first blood in the first 10 seconds because now you're forcing the sub bonus players in a 3v4 to change their defensive look to try to cover more ground. And every single time they try to edge their way on up, LAT were able to spot them, force them to back on down, and then eventually work their way over towards that B street. It's like, I guess they love that gunfight over towards top of pain. Not they a must. single player is staying alive in that position from the sub liners. Yeah, they absolutely must. Okay, have to have this round here if you're New York, without question. Ghosty still hanging on four, Joe on three. Opening its shots from New York, maybe tag a couple of players coming out of the spawn, but really no damage to speak of here as New York are going to take their time and see if they can maybe find a first blood somewhere. But I mean, LA, you can see they're feeling confident around the map as Kremp starts to maybe make a setup over towards blue. Yeah, because they have, all, they have all their bases covered. So we have such the lead that you have up for one. You can start to make a couple crazy kind of plays and the crazy play is upon us as Krep gets aggressive up through blue another first blood to the thieves yeah and you've got hydra oh okay maybe a little bit of a duality play here with sid that works out isolates b alley completely but sky's the bomb carrier has to get a read over towards Krep. the shots are good the kill is in okay good recovery from new york now it's just on to nasty don't know if sib saw him or not seems to have been forces the gunfight doesn't quite take it and new york get the must win round there you go out of the sub -liners. even with the first bullet going the opposing way, they had the instant response to put themselves in the main advantage in the 3v2. 
But I thought if Crimp wins that one-on-one -on -one versus Kai, and that's your bomb carrier. That basically was going to put a bow on the round, but he secures that one-on-one, -on -one, keeps the numbers in their advantage, and then eventually just locate the final player to secure the round. So the subline is able to stop the bleeding for a little bit, but it's been all on the attacks. They need a defensive yeah. win. They need it badly. And I think a lot of it has to be, how can we even contest this B Street right now? Because it's been a problem. Trophy system down. Skies is going to substitute out Sib to try to play over towards the alley. And Hydra is going to step in towards the site he's already been seen. Sib watching over the top of this. And Hydra's just going to try to default to playing on the alley in this corner. Yeah, he's just hoping that his AR is going to assist him in these gunfights long distance. Get a couple players weak. You're going to send in Hydra for the finish. That is going to be Sib finally winning that engagement over towards that B Street. He actually finds that kill through bottom pit. So early first blood, New York. And that's an exit now for Hydra as well with the 4v3. Kisbit, the sole defender over at A, has seen the threat. Starting to mass over towards this A site. Off the cross, Sib gets another. And okay, how about this for New York? Ghosty, nasty, trying to work together bottom blue. New York have sniffed it out. At least they've gotten one of the two. Sib on five in a row, looking for the beatdown for the cruise missile. Not quite able to earn it. But Ghosty is low and he's trapped. Yeah, he's trapped in a 1v3 now. Kismet able to spot him. Or is he? Doesn't spot him, but the information is already gained. Now Ghosty is running for his life, spinning every corner. Now with the rival nine, we're dancing, we're dancing. Eventually Hydra is able to take him down. So the adjustments right there from the subliners have different personnel attacking over towards that B street. But just shutting down that B alley, forcing LAT to work their way over towards A. You're not worried about if they're going to put the bomb down for free. So great place from the subline is to shut down their most effective play. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe a little bit lucky in certain regards because Hydra's getting naded out over towards that elevator alley. But he stays just healthy enough to keep the position. Obviously, the help from beyond super crucial towards him staying alive and then also being able to get out because yeah there was a moment there where he almost felt like he was completely trapped up but regardless it's two rounds in a row for new york back to within one and now on to the more successful half as kismet the propane tank blows up onto nasty towards elevator side and it's another early 4v3 this time for new york there you go subline is finding that first blood so hopefully they can turn this into a round win, but just showing a lot of presence over towards A. You're not going to be able to think about that objective. They're trying to play for that second kill. Yeah, Kismet trying to see if he can catch Cramp on this little jump up. And now he seems to think he's got the window to make the play forward. Cramp tucked in the corner. Oh, not the cleanest of shots. Smoke is out making a mess of this. Kismet just trying to get back away over towards the shack. And he at least keeps his life for now, but LA have staved off the kill, at least for the time being. But Kismet pops out, finds elimination. Now a 4v1 as it's just down to Ghosty once again, stuck to the opposite side of the map. Yep, another 1v4 for Ghosty. This time on the defensive side. Skies is already watching over him, and Skies is not going to shy away from a gunfight. Is able to secure it for the subliners. That's three rounds in a row to tie the game up at four. Carolina went from having frowns and now smiling a little bit. A very, very back and forth S&D. Oh, my goodness. But I think there's still a question here as far as how can New York continue to play good defense around B? Do you keep subbing out Sib to allow Skies to play that angle. Can Sib yeah. find a way to work towards mid-map? Do you trust that Hydra has to commit into B? There's a lot of question marks here, and this may be the round we start to figure out what the adaptation actually looks like for New York. Yeah, you just got to dominate B Street again. That's been the recipe for success, especially on a map like High Rise. But they're sending multiple players on this side of the map. Sib still going to play over towards the top of pain. You cannot afford to die. Thankfully, he's able to get out with 8 HP. Yeah, Hydra still playing over towards mid-map as well, just trying to keep Sib safe. There's a question on where this Steve's offense is starting to set up and Kramp is going to try to play around the back. That's pushed away. Oh boy. It has gotten really tight from first bloods on either side, but everything gets back to calm as we have 55 seconds in a 4v4. Oh, and they're just going to completely allow Sib to get isolated. That smoke grenade shuts down that line of sight for Skies. So early first blood in favor of the Thieves. Hydra with some great shots, not able to find that trade. But now that bomb is getting planted. Yeah, Kismet, I think, saw one player over towards the outside in the form of Cramp Skies trying to get back up towards Heli. Hydra in and around the backside at Underground, shut up by Nasty. So now 4v2 post plant set up for the Thieves. Pretty solid read on where exactly the threat's coming from. Ghosty gets the read on a Kismet. The shutdown is in, and Skies once again finds himself in a winnable, an unwinnable position, I should say. And LA put themselves now on the reverse sweep point, looking solid. And that's just beautiful plays right there. The mid-round adjustments was perfected because you smoke out over towards the B Street. You completely 
shut down that line of sight from Skies, and then you isolate onto Sib because you know he loves to play that position. It's now three first bloods from him on that side of the map. Just can't afford to drop in that spot. And now it leads to LAT being at game point. Back to the defensive side. They go. If you are the sub line, just try to find that first blood. Trophy systems down, Thieves. Not really playing off the alley this time. Just playing kind of over the middle and oh, Nate deep. That's towards a window that lands onto Nasty somehow. So now you've got a flood coming through the bottom. Some team shots come through, but Krep's still able to find the elimination. So we go 3v3 and New York, all of a sudden who looked to try to flood towards B, have to make a bit of a pause. Kismet up and over the ladder, not comfortable enough yet to plant as Skies tries to watch over the top through propane. Yeah, but LAT, they gave up all map control. So if you are the subliners, you just gotta withstand the nades and the stuns coming in. Cause you're gonna turn this one into a 3v3 post plant scenario. So now LAT have 40 seconds to work with. Kismet out and about now. Sib, whoa, he's gotten deep over towards the LA Thieves defensive windows, but he's been seen and tagged. Now he just has to play his life, wait for a little bit of help. The chase is on. Kremp finds the kill for three in a row. Ghosty finds Kismet over the top, just down to skies. Not gonna happen. New York will falter. A reverse sweep for LA. A critical 10 points. And of course, it gives some separation as now Carolina has to start in the lower bracket. Well, maybe a little bit of a lifeline for LAG's playoff hopes as well all of a sudden. Oh my God, like if you're Carolina, you're sitting there like, why? Why is it always us? More specifically, Clayster. I feel like when we get to the end of the year, he's always in a very, very crazy kind of scenario to make his way into champs. You got the job done early on to take down Boston, but New York sublines could not hold it down for you here. LAT just turned up. It all started with that invasion control, man. They clutched up in a very long time in a round five. And then a nail biter sub base hardpoint that they haven't played all throughout this stage where they had a two to seven record. They've been putting in practice and they were able to be victorious there. But then the battle of the first bloods, man, even with the subliners finding it early on into this round, they were able to instantly respond. And then the subliners just try to make too many plays happen. Like once Sip gets spotted in that position and you saw that Kismet now changes his spot up to try to keep Kismet alive live they both mm -hmm. fall and then it turns into a 1v3 la thieves just able to sniff him on out such a great great game number five a, a fantastic series to end the online qualifying stage all throughout the season but that's lat just ruining the fun from carolina and taking that winner's bracket spot with a good good force i mean regardless of what happens you're gonna have